Hello and welcome to the discussion of the top 10 reasons as to why students fail the SEMA operational integrated case study and of course how to overcome this. Now if you are a student repeating this exam, I'll make sure that you would not repeat the mistakes that you committed in the previous attempt. And if you are a student that is facing the SEMA OCS for the first time, well, consider yourself lucky that you found this video. So, with past analysis, we have come up with 10 reasons why students fail. Now, these 10 reasons are not exhaustive, but what we found was these are the top 10 reasons. The top 10 reasons as to why students fail. And of course, I'm going to give you solutions as to how to not repeat this or how to not commit this in your next attempt of the SEMA operational level integrated case study. First of all, let me introduce you to myself. My name is Hashan Madhushankar. I'm the lead tutor for study SEMA. I overlook all the academic processes in study SEMA. So we are a study platform that uh, provides online study support for CIMA. So I've been lecturing for quite some time now and as you are aware CIMA launched the case study style exams from 2015 onwards. So I have been a tutor for all the sessions pertaining to CIMA OCS from 2015 onwards that's covering a wide range of industries and of course I have coached more than 1000 students globally in physical classrooms as well as online tutoring and that's how you can reach me now we offer study solutions for students that are taking up the operational level case study and you can refer to the information below the video. You have all the information that you need. So you can go ahead and take a look at our packages once you finish watching the video. All right, let's get started. Reason number one. No, I can't. What does that mean? Very simple. This is not just applicable for SEMA OCS, but it's applicable for almost any exam or almost anything that you do in your life. There's a popular saying that think you can and you're halfway there or believe you can and you're halfway there. So now the main, the main problem that we tutors faced in 2015 once CIMA um, changed the written exams to the case study exams, students were initially uh, having a lack of confidence that they are not able to pass this style of exams. It's not, uh, not just initially in 2015, even now. Right? You find some students that are not very fond of uh, typing and they are used to writing because, let's face it, ever since our school days we have been used to writing and even now some of you might be pursuing certain qualifications where you are required to write in your exam instead of type. So this might seem a bit of a challenge or a bit of a new area. So initially students start this thinking that there's a good chance of them failing. Right. So if you think you can't pass this exam, guess what? You might fail. There's a very good chance that you will fail. So Everything you do should be triggered from your mind. Alright, so get some confidence in your head and at the initial outset, prepare for this exam with the intention of passing. Right? Build in the mentality that you can pass rather than you might be able to pass or you might not be able to pass. Just think to yourself, I can pass this exam. I have passed exams previously and this is also just another exam. I can pass this. So building that mentality as a start. Let's move on to reason number two. Pen instead of keyboard. So this is triggering from the first reason. Now, 
A main reason why students lack confidence in this exam style is because they have been used to writing instead of typing in exams. Right now, for sure, we use our keyboards a lot with the emergence of social media, you know, chatting around with friends and all. But then again, when it comes to an exam, it's a different game altogether. Right now, I have had many students where they attended the classrooms and instead of bringing a laptop, they just bring a notebook and a pen. Every week or after every class, I advise them, next time bring a laptop instead of a notebook. Sometimes you might argue and think, hey, it's the same thing. It's just your thoughts that you put into words. But trust me, there is a difference. When your fingers hit the keyboard and when your fingers touch a pen, the signals that pass on to your brain can be somewhat different. Right? So, we know that all of us, we have varying speeds between typing and writing. I'm not only referring to the speed, although the speed really matters. You might be very fast with your writing, but not so good with your typing then that is something you need to really focus on in order to pass this exam. But apart from the speed, the way that your brain works, the way that your thinking process works can also be different. I don't want to go into too much of psychology, but if you do some uh, reading on this, you will find that what I'm saying is absolutely true. So at least one, one and a half months before your case study, it's very important that you type answers for tasks and mock exams in order to familiarize yourself with the actual exam. So this is very important. If you are writing, if you are used to practicing questions through writing, please convert to typing. Do yourself a favor and please start typing answers. Right, that's reason two. Reason number three, application, something I would call the main reason why students fail, although I did not include it as reason one, because reason one was changing your mindset, because for everything, it, it all matters about how you think. Anyway, so application, what you need to understand is you're not expected to Duplicate the knowledge that you study in your textbooks. For your objective test question exams, well, to a certain extent, you need to memorize and remember the theories in your textbooks. I'm not denying the fact that you need to remember the theories for the case study. Of course you do. But remember that it's all about applying it to the company. Your examiner wants you to think not like a candidate facing an exam, but like an employee. Because your examiner has clearly, explicitly mentioned that case study exams are a simulated work environment. So it's very important that whatever point you give out, it's applicable for the company that you get in the pre-scene. Your pre-scene is given to you a couple of weeks before the exam, so you have enough time to familiarize yourself as an employee of the particular business you are given with. So, guys, you need to apply your answers to the business. Right? Just think about it this way. Once you start working, let's say your boss expects you to uh, complete a report regarding uh, activity-based costing. To what extent is activity-based costing suitable for the business that you are working for? Just imagine if you give a general report, okay, this is activity-based costing, these are the general advantages and disadvantages. Guys, there's no value addition. Your boss can simply Google it and get that exact report. Your value addition comes from using the knowledge that you have from your textbooks and applying it to the business you're working for. So that is what you have to train yourself to do in the case study exam. So with every point that you give out in your answer, think to yourself, have I applied it to the business or is this just a general answer? If you haven't applied, you're in trouble.
you get very few marks for general answers. So please remember that. Reason number four. Initial misunderstanding. What do I mean by initial misunderstanding? You see, this is a very time pressurized exam. You might have a task where you have 45 minutes and you might have let's say three sections or three different requirements in the task. Now as you're aware in the case study exams once you're granted time for a task and the time runs out you get directed to the next task and you cannot come back to the previous task. So it's natural for students to be highly pressurized with time. So what happens is Many students, in order to save time to give the answer, they read the requirement in a rush. They just speed read through the requirement. Well, speed reading is a good habit, but not exactly for an exam. You might have heard of a certain rule called the 80-20 rule that was conceptualized by Wilfredo Pareto, an Italian economist. According to this rule, 20% of what you do adds 80% of the value. So this initial reading, that is what will decide the quality of your answer. There's no point typing out paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs if you haven't understood the exact requirement. For example, you might have to interpret or you might have to give reasons for why a variance would have occurred. But let's say you simply type out how to calculate that variance. You are not adding value. So please spend some time initially understanding the question. Now, a certain tip that I can give you is as you're going through the question, as you spot a particular requirement, go to the section where you type your answer and type out a subheading for that requirement. That way you will make sure that you understand all the different requirements in the question and you will not miss out on any particular requirement right so as you move along as you read along the question use your time to read the question and plan out your answer we generally recommend you to use around 20 percent of the time available so if it's a 45 minute question 45 minute 20 percent that's nine minutes you can use nine minutes, around nine minutes approximately, give or take, uh, to read through the scenario. And as soon as you spot a requirement, stop reading the scenario, go to the place where you're typing the answer, that is the next window probably, and type out a subheading. Go back to the requirement again, read through. You spot another requirement, go to the place where you're typing the answer, type out the subheading. That way, you make sure that you will not miss out any requirements as well as understand what you are supposed to do or understand what the person who sends you the mail is expecting from you. Reason number five, subsequent misunderstanding or drifting. Now, you might have identified all the requirements correctly and you would have taken a good start with typing out let's say two paragraphs but along the line you get you get carried away and you might drift into some other requirement for example the question might ask you to what extent is activity based costing suitable for the business let's say you type out two three paragraphs giving reasons okay our overheads are high we have different products with different uh, uh, high diversity between products. But when you start, let's say, the third paragraph, you drift a little away and you start typing out the advantages of ABC. ABC gives us a better costing report. ABC helps us to price our products better. Now that is where you are not adding value. What you said is absolutely correct. Yes. ABC helps you to prepare accurate costing reports and yes, ABC helps you in pricing decisions. 
but the question is to what extent or how do you evaluate whether ABC is suitable for us? Now, how do you overcome this? Very simple. After around two paragraphs, or ideally even after every paragraph, you could just read the subheading. And what does the subheading contain? The subheading contains the requirement. And you could just speed read through your paragraph and see, am I in track with the requirement? Now, surely this will consume some seconds or some minutes of your valuable time. But it's better to give a short answer for the requirement as opposed to a very long answer for something that you were never asked for. So please keep that in mind. As you type your answer, make sure you're aware or make sure you read the requirement and see whether you're on track. If not... You are not too late. You can always uh, improvise. right? So don't regret towards the last few minutes. After every couple of paragraphs, make sure you refer to the requirement and see whether you are on track. That's reason number five. And of course, solution number five. Reason number six. The pre-scene. Now you might be thinking... What I'm about to say is that students don't refer to the pre-scene enough. Absolutely not what I'm about to say. Reason number six is students relying too much on the pre-scene. Now, I know some students that I have coached. Some of them, they did the mistake of by hearting the figures in the profit and loss account and the statement of financial position. And they, they were even by hearting the ratios. They were by hearting items in the articles. You are not required to do that. You are simply given a pre-scene for you to familiarize yourself with the business. This is not an exam that is testing how well you remember. Right? This is all about application. And when students see a requirement in the exam, where they cannot draw out points from the pre-scene for the answer, they simply freak out. Guys, remember, if you look at your past variants, you will find that most questions, they don't require any information from the pre-scene. The pre-scene is simply given to you so that you familiarize yourself with the industry and, of course, the business. So don't over-rely on the pre-scene. You definitely have to remember the key themes and the key points of the pre-scene. For example, sales have reduced. For example, they are about to launch a new product. For example, government is cutting down on subsidies. Now, those are things you need to keep in your mind. But you don't have to remember the trade payables figure for the last year, the gross profit margin for the current year, how many minutes it takes in a certain part of the process. So please don't do that mistake. And not only the pre-scene, certain students, they refer too much or they research too much on the industry. It, it is useful for you to know a thing or two about the industry. But remember, this is a highly technical paper. 64% of your marks come from technical skills. And even business people and leadership, they don't expect you to do a lot of industrial research and, you know, uh, research on successful businesses in this industry or businesses that are similar to the business you're given in the pre-scene. No, you are not required to do that. Reason number seven. Practice, practice, practice. Any successful person whether it comes to business, whether it comes to sports, they'll tell you that practice will make you perfect. You guys might have heard about something called the 10,000 hour rule. Now, whether it is 100% accurate or not, I'm not sure, but it makes sense in every way. Since the more you practice, the better you get at it. Now, when you say practice, 
you have to draw a few borders here just because you keep practicing questions that itself is not enough you have to ensure that you practice questions pertaining to the business that you are given in the pre scene for example if you are given regarding a company that manufactures solar panels and you keep practicing questions from totally unrelated industries well it's not going to add much of a value coincidentally there might be some areas that are relevant to both but you're taking a big risk there so you have to make sure that you get your hands on resources that are pertaining to the business in the pre scene and that is one area that we can help you immensely so as i mentioned at the start of this presentation i told you you can have a look at the resources that we offer you can go through the link at the bottom of the video and you can see the type of uh, questions that we offer and maybe you can get your hands on that that would greatly help you to overcome this hurdle so guys keep practicing questions pertaining to the industry and the business in the pre scene because ultimately that is what you will be tested in your exam and you can always think of certain scenarios because you have a limited syllabus you have three subjects e1 p1 and f1 your examiner cannot test you beyond that so you can always read through the pre scene and you can think of the areas in your syllabus and you yourself will be able to come up with certain questions and answers and who knows you might get the exact same scenario at your exam right so keep practicing reason number 8 past variants now since 2015 since 2015 february you have five variants per session which means by this point you have so many past exam variants to refer to now why i put this as a reason as to why students fail is simply because they rely too much on past variants when practicing now reason number 7 was lack of practice but as i mentioned you simply practicing more and more questions that's not that's not sufficient you have to practice questions pertaining to your pre scene and one thing most students do they simply think practicing past variants will help them to easily pass this exam well the previous syllabus of cima from 2010 to 2015 that was not case study based for operational level it was three individual papers for p1 f1 and e1 and if you practice past papers well that was going to add a lot of value for your exam but unfortunately not much anymore sure you have to refer to the past variants and the reason you have to refer to the past variants is to familiarize yourself with the style of your exam it doesn't hurt to practice a question here and there from past variants but please ensure that the industry that is given in that past variant is similar to the one that you are facing if it's a manufacturer make sure you practice questions pertaining to a manufacturer if it's a service provider then do so accordingly right now i wouldn't recommend that highly because between two manufacturers there can be a very wide difference for example a solar panel manufacturer and a bakery the operations can be entirely different right one person one business might be b2b one business might be b2c so there can be so many differences so what you should do with the past periods is familiarize uh, familiarize yourself with how the exam works and you can go through the questions and see the style in which your questions are prepared don't waste too much time practicing these questions but instead practice questions pertaining to your industry that is what will help you achieve success at the exam reason number 
this is not enough hmm. now i'm sure you must be aware if you're if you're taking up your operational case study for the first time or if you have attempted it before i hope you're aware how to pass this exam generally all the past exams that we have done if you take the otqs for example there's a certain pass mark 100 out of 150 a scale score of 100 out of 150 and once you get that you pass but in case study there's an additional criterion introduced with regards to skills as you know your sima curriculum expects a sima pass finalist or a management accountant to have four skills technical business people and leadership at the operational level your pass or fail can be decided by three out of four skills that's technical business and people you are allocated marks for leadership but it doesn't decide whether you pass or fail now many students they manage to score moderate marks for technical business and people when i say moderate i'm referring to one third of the marks available but they fail they get moderate marks for these three skills but they fail why would that why would that be they have not achieved 80 out of 150 maybe they end up with say 72 for example so if you manage to score moderate marks for the three skills or maybe even strong but if you not if you don't score 80 or above that's simply because you have not given enough content that is one possible reason another possible reason might have been you drifting away from the requirement which i discussed previously so assuming that you were on requirement on the requirement rather why would you get marks less than 80 because of inadequate con content now your examiner does not specify a certain amount of words that you need to give in because it's it's uh, it all depends on your judgment as a rule of thumb i would generally recommend students to give in three to four points for a particular requirement right? for example what are the advantages of zero based budgeting to our business well you can give around three well explained points and well applied if you have a little bit of extra time maybe include a fourth point because according to my opinion, two points seem inadequate and exceeding four points seem a little too much. So as a general rule of thumb, I would recommend you to stick to three to four points. Now, when I say three to four points, please remember one line sentences, they are not very value value. So make sure your sentences are at least, or uh, make sure your paragraphs are at least two sentences two to four sentences one one line paragraphs well they don't look very professional according to examiner so the best best way to judge the amount of content is to go through the answers for past variants that is the examiner's recommended answer and this is a and that is a very good benchmark for you to judge as to the amount of points that you need to present for an answer right so if you want to avoid failing by not getting enough marks make sure you stick to the requirement and make sure you include enough content and i have given you a part of the solution another part of the solution for this problem practice 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 last reason reason number 10 what about the remaining requirements of the task well certain exams that you have done previously i would say almost every exam you simply needed to get a certain mark out of 100 let's say so for example in otqs you are expected to get 100 out of 150 a scale score of 100 out of 150 now from which question you get the mark that doesn't create a difference as long as you have 100 out of 150 scale score you pass 
And during your school days, for example, advanced level, let's say your accounting paper, let's say your accounting paper has five questions, each question carrying 20 marks. Let's say your pass mark is 50. Now, if you skip certain parts of a question, it doesn't matter because you're clearly communicated as to the amount of marks you get. And a student who skipped certain sections might end up with, say, 75 marks, for example. Now, in the previous reason, we discussed one instance why students fail. They might get moderate marks for skills, but a low average. But if you don't answer all the requirements in a task, you might end up in the other way. You might get an average exceeding 80, but you might have weak marks or weak grading for one of the three skills. There are so many students that I have seen. In fact, one student scored 105 marks, 105 marks. Technical skills were strong, business skills were strong, people skills were weak. Overall result, fail. Now, students often question me, why exactly does this happen? The answer is very simple. Because you, you tend to answer only parts of a requirement. Let's say, now out of the four tasks in your exam, let's take the first task. The first task has three bullet points with three different requirements. Out of the three bullet points, the first two contains marks pertaining to technical and business skills, whereas the third bullet point contains marks pertaining to people skills. Now what happens is, let's say you're very strong with the areas relating to the first two bullet points, so you start with that naturally. You end up typing a huge answer for the first and second requirements of this task, but you run out of time to enter an answer for the third part. Now, if this question was out of, say, 45 marks, for instance, you would have scored a good, say, 28 marks. So 28 out of 45, that's definitely exceeding the average. But then again, the marks you lost were pertaining to people's skills. And let's say there are no other tasks that gives you marks on people's skills. This was the only task that gave you marks on people's skills. And you missed out on that. Probably due to lack of timing. So what happens? You end up with an average of more than 80. But you end up failing in a skill. So how do we avoid this? It's very natural for us to start with areas that we are strong with. So if the first two requirements of that so-called task is within your comfort zone, I'm not asking you not to start with it. You can go ahead and start with it because you're comfortable with that. But make sure you divide the time adequately between all three parts of that task. Just because you're strong in the first two doesn't mean you have to spend all the time on that. Right? So... Maybe you can keep 8 to 10 minutes probably for the third task, depending on how much of content you have to put in. So even if it's not within your comfort zone, guys, make sure you include some content. Because to be moderate in a skill, all you need is one third of the marks. And that is easily achievable with practice. So don't miss out on a particular section. Make sure you include adequate content for each part of a task. That way you will mitigate the risk of failing with a weak grading for a skill. Right, so that's the end of my presentation. I hope you found this video useful. I would like to hear what you have to say about this, especially those of you who have uh, faced the operational case study before. I'm pretty sure that you would find at least one out of these 10 reasons uh, useful and something that you didn't pay attention to which ended up in uh, 
you not being able to clear the exam so these 10 reasons and the solutions to overcome them please make sure that you follow these tips that i'm giving you and this will definitely result in your success at the case study exam thank you for tuning in and all the very best in all the exams that you're facing in future and don't forget to subscribe up our page i will keep producing videos that are helpful to you on exam tips and discussion of pre-scenes and so on. And finally, make sure that you check our resources. You will definitely find them useful. And if you need to contact us, I have I stated the email at the start of the presentation. It's info at studysima.co.uk. I have included that email below. So please feel free to contact us. Give us any sort of a comment. And if you have any sort of a doubt that you require, please make sure you contact us and we'll be more than willing to help you. Thank you guys. Cheers.